Hello guys, my name is Oscar and you're welcome once again to my YouTube channel. This is video number three, the final video in a three-part series where I show you how to edit a stream inferno video just like I do. In today's video, you're going to be learning how to cut up the video, apply transition and effects, lower thirds and your graphic images to get this video ready for delivery to the web. So without wasting much of your time, let's jump right into Premiere Pro and I'll show you how that's going to be done. So, uh, in the last video, if you didn't watch the last video, you can go back and check the last video. Uh, in the last video, I showed you guys how to sync audio with the video. If you have not watched that, go check that out before coming back to this. It would make a lot of sense. So, in the last video, right here, you can see that we synced the audio. And this is the audio we're working with. That is Logos Audio. So yeah, we got that synced, but to speed up this tutorial because I don't want to be sitting down here all day and I'm sure you don't want to be watching me all day. So you just want to get right to the meat and juice of this. I'm going to be showing you what we're going to be doing. So since we have this, normally we would have about three clips. So this is the medium, we could have a wide and we could have a extra wide, a full shot. And for this sake, what I'm going to go through is now to start the cuts. I'm just going to go to my timeline and select the razor tool and I'm going to play this through and I'm going to any bit which I think doesn't make any sense, I'm going to cut it off. Bear in mind, normally there should be three tracks, three video tracks at least for a straight inferno video, but just for the purposes of showing you what to do, I'm going to use one track then I'm going to show you one which I did earlier. So let's get into it. So I'm going to just play back through this and I'm going to cut out any part which I feel it doesn't make any sense. So yeah, I'll speed this up, but you can just do the same thing. Use the razor tool. The razor tool with a shortcut C. Once you press C, you get the razor tool. So I'm going to go into the timeline, start from the beginning. This seems to be like the perfect thing because I'm not seeing any bad bits to cut out, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to go into the one which I did earlier and I could show you this much more clearly. So I'm going to go right here into Logos Allure. As you can see, this is a completed project. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn off some tracks. So I've got the titles. I'm going to turn those off. I'm going to turn this layer off. And okay, I can leave that on for now and so you can see we have two layers here two tracks when i call layers because i use adobe suite a lot so i'm used to calling tracks layers anything which is stacked i call it layers but in this case if you hear me say layers i'm talking about tracks so on track one you can see that we have that same video which we had in the previous sequence anytime i'm on track one you see the track one clips here see that they are all that cut. I can turn this off so you can see it properly. So any trick, any tip on track one is that cut. So what I did is after syncing the three clips, so I have track one, track two, and track three, and I went through them and cut out the bad parts and chose the best spots and at the end of that exercise, you're going to find that you're starting to see a video which you might like or you might not like. That's called the rough cut or the first cut. And once you've got that, that means you've got something to go off on. Most people get to that stage and they just put their video out. That is the difference between an anyhow done video and a polished video. So after that, you're going to add your effects, your transitions, your lower thirds and your logo, if you've got any, any graphics which you want to add, you do that and then you color grade. So I have this clips cut up here. And for this, if I wanted to add any effects, like in this clip here, I shot it in a limited space. But before shooting it, I came up with the idea of actually cropping the sides and making it a stylistic choice. So I'm going to show you how to apply that effect. So for this clip now, you can see the sides, you can see the uh, background stand and a door behind it. So I'm just going to go into the clip 
uh, so and I'll use the if you go to the effects panel I'll look for the tool called crop so that's a crop effect and you drag that to the clip and I'm not going to drag that because I've already got crop here so I'm just going to turn it on so and if you go into the crop effect you can see left right top bottom and if you increase or decrease that what it does is it takes away it basically crops the clip from whatever direction you've selected so I'm going to show you how this looks when cropped you can see this is this same clip cropped up and a grade is applied to it but if I turn off the effects toggle off the effects you can see how the clip this is how the clip came out of the camera but after cropping off this sides as you can see the door here and the blinds with the background stand and applying the grade you can see that it looks a whole lot different that just gives it a polished look if I left this in like you're gonna watch the video and be like what's going on like really why was this left here why was this left here so i did not let the limitations of not having a wide enough space or a big enough space stop me from shooting i still shot what i had to shoot and when i got into adobe premiere pro i did the job of an editor which is to make something work with the clips which you have been given which is what i did with straight inferno so right here you have the clips all cut up and the effects and transition have been added whatever effects i don't use much effects in i don't use much effects in street inferno apart from the crop or maybe some key framing just to move the the frames from left to right i don't use fancy effects for street inferno so i'm going to turn on the effects so this is one of the effects which i use and this is just simple motion tracking and key framing i duplicated the clips and because this crop was a bit too narrow and I wanted the I wanted the image to fill the screen so I decided to make it like a carousel and that's how this effect came out. So let me play that back so you see what was behind that. This is all the same clip. It's all the same clip just playing back side by side. If I go into that nested sequence you can see that it's pretty much what it is i've got the clips stacked up on each other and i've got them keyframes to move in that way so i'm going to go back to logos Alori, and pretty much that's the essence of the whole video so i've cut it up the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to put in my lower third if you go to your graphics tab in premiere pro you should under my templates you should have some beautiful templates which came with your Premiere Pro, but you can also go on the internet and download. There are lots of resources for you to download lower thirds and elements which you can use with your Premiere Pro project. A favorite of mine, which I just found out, is called mixkit.co. I'm going to be doing a review of that in a video very soon. If you go to mixkit.co, you can actually download cool lower thirds and Premiere Pro templates for your projects and use them for free. They're actually free so they even have stock video and they have music which you can use for free in all of your projects i found out recently and i've been testing out their products and they seem to be quality so for this i'm going to put a lower third which i got from the my library here i have so many which i've downloaded over the years and over the months and i keep changing them because you have to be current so for street inferno i have a branding guide and I use the box lower thirds. So this is the, no matter the street inferno you see, you're going to be seeing this lo box lower thirds might be in a different color. And the whole point of that is consistency. So like it's all street inferno videos will be on brand. Even if you don't see the street inferno logo on it, you would see that box and know that okay, this is how street inferno does their stuff. I got that from the essential graphics panel here. You can simply just get any any motion graphics or any template you need, drag it in and edit it on the same panel here by clicking on edit. So I've got this here, this lower third here on the timeline and you can see I added the name Logos Oluri as it appears here. On subtext I put his Instagram username and it's as simple as that. Change the colors and as you're doing these things they basically updates on the timeline 
So, once the lower third and the effects are done, the next thing for me to do is now to add the graphics. So, I have two graphic files here. One's a title file actually, but two files up here. So, what I do is the Street Inferno logo, you can see that once I put that on, I've got the Street Inferno logo in the bottom right. And basically, the logo, once the logo was brought in, this is how the logo was. This is the normal size of the logo, but I had to go into the scale preset and bring it down to 30 here and use the position tool to actually bring it to the bottom right. So if I put that on, you can see it just looks good there. So, and that's where it always stays in all Street Inferno videos. And above that logo, I've got the Street Inferno hashtag, which is something I was trying to promote. So I put that there so that it sticks in the mind of people. and looking at this already it looks finished i'm gonna leave a link to shooting inferno youtube channel so you can see what the finished video looks like a link to this particular video so you can see what it looks like really editing is just about problem solving so there are many rules and there are rules which you can make on your own you can break rules like you just have to get a finished product take what you have and make it into something which is usable, like it has to be usable. So this is pretty much the finished product. So this brings us to the end of my three part series where the aim was to show you how to edit a student final video in Adobe Premiere Pro. I hope you've learned something. I'm going to be making more videos on filmmaking and video editing as the time goes by. And I'm also going to be making product reviews as I have a lot of gear here. If you do find some value in the content which I put out, I'd like you to support the channel by subscribing, leaving a comment and sharing this content with your friends who you feel might enjoy it and until next time stay safe <laughs>